pivotal to living a successful Christian life. You know, a lot of times you go to meetings and it can be very superficial or it can be very surface. But I think, you know, what we're hearing, what happened on last night and, and uh, just every session that's building upon each other. And so it's just really, really been a blessing. So I um, want us to begin and we'll talk about biblical equality. It is not a movement. It is something that the Word of God wants us to get a hold of because it was Jesus' purpose for coming. So if we were to just kind of put some things out as it relates to some of the scriptures that have been misinterpreted, I want to talk about a couple of those just to kind of put them in light of the context of not just um, the quoting of them, but also even in the setting, because I think that's important too. You know, um, setting is very key for us to understand what was going on at the time. And we've instances of the past have lifted scriptures out and we tried to appropriate them, not really understanding that there were things that were going on based on a certain culture, a Grecian culture, or Jewish culture, or um, during the setting, you know, where there were just a lot of different activity going on. And as a result, we've misinterpreted the context of, of really what they are. So just as an opener, I always interpret a verse in agreement with its context. Interpret in agreement with its context. It's vital. Its surrounding verses and chapters, the meaning of the part so that it can be consistent with the whole. To understand a passage in light of its meaning to the persons for whom it was written. We've got to understand that, you know, the Bible is a book of letters and it was written um, to a certain people to a certain time. And we have to understand um, what it is uh, being addressed to and who it is being addressed to, to the persons for whom it was written. Um, when interpreting some of the other things that we consider are the customs and the events that were taking place when it was written the customs, the events at the time, you know, the head covering and just, you know, all the things that were taking place in the New Testament church. We have to interpret it in light of all other scripture, in light of all other scripture. And we also have to be mindful um, of the interpretation according to the best use of the original language because the Bible as I mentioned on yesterday in Ephesians 5 verse 21 that uh, verse 22 does not have the word submission in the original text but it was inserted there and so it is hupotasso and then it's being translated and we looked at the word head and we use the Noah Webster dictionary to try to define it and so we have to really go back to the original language so that we can understand the, the mind and the intent of the, of the passage. Yeah. Um, so in light of that, let's look at what biblical equality is. It is defined as every person standing on equal ground. Very simple. Every person stands on equal ground in Christ. In Christ, there is no distinction, neither Jew nor Greek. In fact, let's look at this in Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Biblical equality means that all believers stand on equal ground before Christ. We looked at in Genesis chapter 2, uh, when we mentioned the word Ezer and how God used Ezer to restore back to humanity that which the serpent had done in the Garden of Eden. And so Jesus came so that we could all operate and we could all benefit from being one with him. What the enemy did in the Garden of Eden was create division. He created strife, hostility between us and God. There was a wall up between us and God. We had to go through a man, through the priest, the political priesthood, in order to get to God. And so God sent Jesus so that we could have a direct conduit, a direct access to God through his word. And so when we look at this area of equality, 
we can understand that it is not the ultimate thing, but it is a means to where God wants us to be. Because we know in heaven, we're all going to live as equals. But on this earth, we've got to understand how to live as equals. And so this is an issue that the scripture deals with. This is what the scripture talks about. As Pastor Mike talked about last night, how, you know, there were so many different things that were going on as it related to the days and who could eat and, and uh, separation and all these things concerning mixing the law and mixing grace and people really not knowing how to live more mindset on the things of the law versus really understanding that as a result of Jesus coming that we're really supposed to live based on the feeling of the Holy Spirit. And so when we understand how to, uh, as Andrew just mentioned, benefit from our personal relationship with the Holy Spirit, then we can really get over into the fullness of why Jesus came. Amen? And that innermost, that intimacy, the drawing near to God that we'll really get a hold of what he wants to do and how he feels about us, that he loves us and he really believes in us. And that'll motivate us to really want to be secure in him and know who we are in him. And we can live as equals and we can no longer see ourselves as sinners under the law, living beneath our privileges, living under the curse, living without. But Jesus came so we could be redeemed and we could live as one with Jesus and so that was why Jesus prayed. He says that, you know, that we would be sanctified through his word and that the, he and the Father were one and that he prayed that we could be one with him. Amen? Amen. 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 So in Galatians chapter 3, we'll kind of start here. Because if any man be in Christ, what does the scripture say? He's a new creation. He's a new species of being. How many of us are in Christ this morning? So we're in Christ, we're a new creation, a new species that has never existed before. And so when we're in Christ, all things, he says, are passed away. Living under the law, living beneath, living under the curse, living under, you know, fear of danger, living, you know, with our lives in the balance, you know, just wondering and worrying, that's not God's best. And so when we understand what Jesus redeemed us from, then we can live based on what he redeemed us to. Just like we were informed last night, what is it that we've been made alive to? And so uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse, uh, let's look at, let's start in verse 23. But before faith came, we kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us into Christ that we might be justified by faith. So it took Jesus coming. It took an Ezra to begin to bring forth deliverance through a man who would redeem us from the law and bring us into God's best, and bring us into a revelation of the anointed one and his anointing. But after that, faith has come. We are no longer under a schoolmaster, or we're no longer, uh, the Amplified says, under a trainer, the guardian of our childhood. But we are all children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. So he says when we are born again, when we come into a spiritual union, the Amplified says, and a communion with Christ, when we become one with Christ, and when we become a, ch a child of God, baptized into him, that we put on Christ, that we're clothing ourselves with Christ, with the Word and with the Anointed One and His anointing. And he says, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither bond nor free, there's neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. So he says in Christ, the Amplified says, there is no distinction. There is now no distinction neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither male 
slave nor free. There's neither male nor female, for we are all one in Christ. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed, and we are heirs according to the promise of God. Now, we are all equal before Christ, and God calls people regardless of our race, regardless of our gender, and regardless of our class. We are all equal. The Bible affirms that we're not the same, but we have to understand that that word equal doesn't mean the same, but that we complement and we benefit each other based on our differences. And how many you know differences are okay? And so when we really get a hold of this, we can understand some things concerning what biblical equality is. In fact, let me share, share this with you. Biblical equality is that all believers are given authority in Christ and that our gender, our race, or our class does not privilege us. Our gender, our race, or our class is not to privilege us, but it is based on a believer's gifting or calling that all believers stand in Christ on equal ground and before God. And so, you know, we've heard, you know, here recently in society about white privilege, or we, you know, in the church, we've seen a lot of male privilege. But, you know, those things are not to be the basis for how we operate, but that in Christ, we are all one in the eyes of God. Amen? Amen? And so when we can understand how to rightly divide the body of Christ, we'll see each other like God sees us. And we can complement and we can benefit one, each, one another. And we can benefit society. We can complement in the home, in the marriage, and in our personal lives. Because what Jesus came to do is redeem us from the curse of the law. The curse was real. The curse was something else. In fact, I was looking at something in Leviticus chapter 19 about the curse. It even talked about, um, let's see, I think it was 19 verse, let's see, where is that? Look at verse 27. You shall not round the corners of your heads. He's talking about not even wearing edges. Think of that. You know, you got your little baby hair, and man, that's a big thing, that baby hair. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You get that little soft brush, and you make sure those edges are just right. Some of us African-American women, hey, it's about to, got to keep those edges. But anyway, um, he said, you shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shall you mar the corners of your beard. So if you're talking about living under the law, I mean, you're talking about a certain fabric you can't wear, certain fabrics you can't combine, uh, you know, God forbid everybody who ate ribs on 4th of July, you know, just everything. It's a lot, but I'm so thankful it just makes me tired of thinking about the law that Jesus came. That Jesus came to redeem us from the curse of the law. Hallelujah. And the effects that come along with it. So, you know, in many instances, we're still not really living in the fullness of it. And so that's why we have to continue to renew our mind on what it is that we've been redeemed from. What it is that we've been redeemed from. It's because... Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. In Genesis, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, he's